You will have noticed that we keep encoding things with lambda, and I've hinted that lambda is difficult to encode with other things. In fact, we could boil down our curly language to just lambda, function calls, and variables that reference the arguments to functions. And this will be a useful language in the Turing sense. We'll be able to write any curly computation. The encodings might get elaborate. But uh, this is such a useful and well-known small version of curly that it has its own name. It's called the lambda calculus. The syntax is usually written a little bit differently, and I'm going to go somewhere in between, which I think will be the clearest notation for our purposes. So I'm going to continue using curly braces when I have a function call, and I'm going to use round parentheses when I have a lambda, and I'm going to spell lambda with the Greek letter instead of spelling it out. So that means that our true encoding will actually write like this from now on. Lambda x, lambda y x, same thing, just using parentheses and using the, the letter lambda. Uh, if I wanted to apply true to a and b, I'll write it with curly braces like this. Right? a and b are variables uh, in this case. Um, and then remembering that true is that abbreviation. Really, I have, if I spell it all out, these two curly braces mean that we have a function call and a function call inside that. And then we have a function. Um, and this is the argument to that function. And this is the other argument to that function. So that's the notation we're going to use because it's a little more compact, uh, reduces the nesting of curly braces a little bit, and because it's a little bit closer to the standard notation for the lambda calculus.